Let's hear it. How do you say hygge? Exactly like you. It's not like that. It's hygge. Hygge. Yeah. H y g g e. Hygge. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it 100% correctly. Hygge. Hi G. Piggy. This little book is going to be my guide this week, and the book tells me that it's pronounced hygge. Huga. Huga roughly translates to a cozy feeling of warmth and togetherness. And that makes sense for a country that is known for having really long, harsh winters. Just imagine like being snuggled up by a fire with some warm socks and some like hot chocolate. That's the life. That's the life I want. It's about me. By the way, if you're an American, this is Denmark. Wait, no. This is that that okay, this is Denmark. This is Den. If you've been on Pinterest or Instagram lately, you know that Huga is having kind of a moment. And I don't know what it is about Americans. Actually, I do. It's toxic capitalism, but, but, but whatever. The point is is that we can't seem to enjoy anything without turning it into a commodity. But can you really commodify a feeling? Can you sell someone the warmth of friends and family? The answer is yes, and it starts with a color palette. The color palette chosen for Huga as a commodity is white, usually with a sprinkling of reds and greens in order to evoke like a rustic, homey look. But the choice of light colors as a base is very important because it conjures up another idea, purity. Part of marketing is building a sense in the consumer that they're lacking something, that their lives are somehow incomplete without this 60 inch flat screen Samsung TV or this pair of shoes that tone your butt while you walk or these birch tree inspired candles that make your home feel as pure and white as the pristine woodlands of Denmark. Huga as a commodity plays on our modern day fears that our lives have been corrupted by technology. Well, but before computers and iPhones, we ignored each other with newspapers just as God intended. Modern day people are very concerned about how divided our lives have become, and that makes us vulnerable to marketing that claims to offer a solution. And of course, some of the ideas are great, like turning off your phone when you're with family and relaxing on your super deluxe soft faux sheepskin fur chair couch or cover area rug for bedroom floor sofa living room. The trick is to offer a wholesome solution that no one would ever argue with while surrounded by products that the consumer can purchase. To offer an image of peace and effortless comfort. But the truth is, if you were truly practicing Huga, you wouldn't have taken the picture at all. Huga as content. The United States is in kind of a bad place. Most Americans work very hard for not enough money, and the decline of unions and labor laws has left a lot of people feeling like they're living to work instead of working to live. This downturn has disproportionately affected Generation Y, or what conservative shitlords call millennials. And many of us have attempted to escape this abusive financial cycle by trying our hand at becoming internet content creators, bloggers, YouTubers, Instagram models, and of course, lifestyle gurus. People trying to make a career out of monetizing the only thing they have, their lives. And don't get me wrong, I'm not here to trash talk people trying to monetize their lives. <laughs> Patreon. But this does tend to create what I've been calling the content dog pile. It's this sort of frantic scramble to cover and exploit any new trend that gets released into the ecosystem by marketers. The problem is, besides the fact that it's depressing, is that it creates this illusion that everyone is capable and achieving of something that's really out of reach for many. There's this pressure to like live in the moment, to be thankful for every experience, to eat clean, to spend more time with your family. And I am apparently going to achieve that with all white furniture. Like, do you have kids? <laughs> Huga and class. Americans seem to be divided between people who zealously love American culture and those who are consumed with self-loathing for it. The former usually goes through phases of fixation with other cultures. So if you've ever uttered the phrase, yeah, but Japanese cartoons are just way better, or the English are just so much more refined than us, you're probably one of these people. Don't worry, so am I. 
but this leads us to unfairly compare ourselves to other countries. And I do mean unfairly. Generally, it's a lot easier to be present, thankful, and content when you're not worried that you're going to die of a completely preventable disease. Because here's the thing, Denmark has universal health care, and they have a lower poverty rate, and the Danish government pays their students to go to college. They pay them! <laughs> it's okay, I'll just be over here crying into my Navient account. <laughs> oh, there's Navient now. I'm not answering. <laughs> In 2016, Denmark was named one of the best countries to live in if you're a woman regarding gender equality. And if you recall, 2016 was not a great year for American women. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> Which brings us to this uncomfortable intersection between the marketing of Huga as a commodity to Americans and this anxious economic struggle that most of us are living. And look, before the lifestyle gurus come for me, why, why am I suddenly Jenna Marbles? Sorry. Watch out, Jenna Marbles, I'm coming for your brand. There's nothing really wrong with the concept of Fuga. I just think that it's disingenuous to present it as this life-affirming panacea for all your existential anxieties, when in reality, it's just neat. It's neat. The Danes made a lovely tradition for the cold winter months. Neat. Always be skeptical of marketing that makes you feel incomplete. You don't need to redecorate your house to practice something like huga. You might want to clean though. Who boy? And always remember, our lives are an intersection between our own choices and the systems that we live in. And if we want the kind of lives that so many Danes enjoy, we need a system that's going to facilitate that. Thank you for watching my video about the problem with Huga. My name is Magdalene, and I ruin things on the internet for a living, apparently. Uh, if you enjoyed that and want to see more of this series, or just whatever other weird stuff I make, uh, please go over to my Patreon and check that out, because um, that's where I get money. I never, ever write these properly. I always am like, oh, I'll think of something in the moment, and then it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But check out my cool crop top! Woohoo! Check out that pasty winter skin. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs>